Hi there, I'm Sarah and this is one of the Ask Me Anything Answer videos. Today's topic is how to create sacred space. And one of you brought up the question is like how to create sacred, sacred space when we don't really even have a lot of space. So I will be addressing that. Hi, I'm Sarah. I am a traditional Usui Reiki master teacher, a holistic life coach and a yoga teacher. And when addressing this question, I like to go back in history a little bit in regards to my own journey and when I started to try to create a personal practice, a personal mindfulness and spiritual practice, oh God, over 12 years ago, uh, which is really not a long time in perspective, but it feels like forever because ever since I have completely changed and transformed and healed so much from just that starting point of creating space for myself. So first I want to address the symbology of the sacred space. And the goal of setting up sacred space is so that you begin to have a space that is just for you, where you can connect with your own energy and are not really confused about what's yours and what's somebody else's crap. And also setting boundaries a lot of the time especially as women and mothers and sisters and wives and daughters we give and give and give and give and oftentimes we're giving energy that we don't even have and then we end up feeling drained and tired and even resentful because half the time these people are not even grateful for how much they take from us and this sacred space is that little hi becky that little sanctuary where you can come to and reset and it's me time and I don't care what's going on in the world I am going to find my center and ironically a lot of the times the first thing that I have to kind of teach students is to get rid of this guilt that you're taking away from someone or something else like people feel guilty that they go look themselves in a room or go in a little corner just because you know they're supposed to be cooking they're supposed to be you know spending time with their kids they're supposed to be helping their husband or their mother or their whatever and that's the first step and what i would say to that is first of all realize that you can't give what you don't have so by actually going into your little corner and replenishing your energy system you are technically giving because then you can go back out into the world from that centered quiet really filled cup and then give wholeheartedly without holding back why because you're where you need to be a lot of times we end up giving out of either responsibility or guilt or and this you might not want to hear we end up giving out of a manipulation we give so that then something is owed to us and then we get to collect at a later point in time that is unhealthy given and the reason that that happens is because you feel not complete you feel not whole not full your cup is empty and that's why you feel that need to control to manipulate to you know all these messy messy things that go on in the head of humans um so that's the first thing so it's space for you to replenish and please get rid of the kilt because he ain't helping you and actually by taking time um I'll answer that in a second, Becky. By taking time for yourself, you will then be more whole to allow everyone to give. Um, Becky is asking, do you do this first thing in the morning? And the answer is, it depends. It depends on a lot of things. As a matter of fact, if you go down the feed, there's a video that talks about the elements, the five elements, water, earth fire, air, and spirit. And depending on your constitution, you might need to do this in the morning or you might need to do this at night. It will depend also on your schedule. If you are a teacher and you have to be at work at 7 a.m., then you're probably better off doing this at night. If you work late and by the time you get home, you're completely drained and you won't have energy, then you're better doing this in the morning. Sometimes, if you have time in the middle of the day, that might be a good time. 
ideally the middle of the day is a little fiery so it's harder to um, find that quiet Zen center in the middle of the day but we have to be very practical because we live in the world and so you have to find not only the time that's right for you Becky but also the practice that's right for you depending on your level of activity if you go to the gym or if you don't if you walk in nature or if you don't depending on how much time you have whatever this practice is has to be customized for your specific needs so maybe I'll do another video on that so I can go more in depth on that I want to keep this video about the actual space itself so the first thing is it has to be yours and I know that this might be difficult if you have limited space at home I literally want it to be just a little corner like it literally can be a corner of a room it doesn't have to be an entire room but ideally I want this to be your own personal space if you have to share that space with someone either on a regular basis or on a temporary basis what I would say is I would recommend that you do some space clearing before you sit down so that you have some sort of ritual that says okay whatever energies are in this space from any people that might have been using this space now please leave and it's my space now and it's almost like a symbolic thing but there is a lot of rituals that you could do one of my favorite things to do is to use sage uh white sage you can find that on like amazon or at the whole foods or you could use uh, palo santo that will somehow clear some negative energies out of the space and then you want to put in positive vibes on the space and the things that you want to put in have to be dear to your heart it has to be something that makes you feel warm inside so I would start by doing the five elements so maybe a little cup of water or a waterfall if you have one uh, a candle is usually good for representing fire if for some reason you're not allowed to burn candles in your space maybe you rent an apartment or something you can put in a lamp or a picture of a flame um, for air you could do feathers or you could do incense that would represent air for earth you could do either crystals crystals are a very good uh, representation of the element of earth and depending on your constitution actually there's a couple of girls in this group who have a crystal shop um, Celeste and oh man I sorry I can't remember your name off the top of my head because I'm live and I'm nervous and then I can't think but um, you could Google and uh, maybe I'll put the link to the crystal shop here on the comments below um, you can get amethyst or rose quartz or all sorts of different crystals that resonate with you and that will represent earth and also you need something that represents spirit and that depends on you for some of us like I'm comfortable with all religions so at some point I don't have that anymore but at some point in my long long time ago I used to have like a picture of Jesus and a picture of the Buddha and a picture of a couple of like yogi swamis that I respected and to me that was my connection with spirit uh, for some maybe if you're of the Jewish religion that's not allowed so then you have to do whatever it is for you that you're comfortable that represents spirit I think for them is candles um, so whatever your connection is with spirit maybe for some of us it might be something else um, I would say avoid putting things of like family and people that you know that is not something that you want to have in your altar or that represents your priorities it's okay to make your family your priority but we all are our own individual self and that might not be the best representation of spirit that's one of the things that sometimes students ask um, then the space needs to be light if possible like at some point I had to do my meditation like down in the basement next to the laundry room because like my house was taken by the kids and my ex-husband and everybody else and so I couldn't I didn't have a room with like lights like I have now like right now I have like seven windows here and I have natural light that was impossible so you might have to light up the space with some soft lighting so that it, it shouldn't be a gloomy dark space it should be a light and bright Right space it should also be airy so if you could at all pipe at all possible you can be near a window or you can have a little bit of a crack open um, on a window nearby that allows fresh air to come through air is energy prana life force and it'll keep the space clear 
Um, so that's what I would say. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to address. If you have any questions, type them on the chat to see if there's any other questions that you would like me to address in regards to sacred space. So it's for you to replenish without guilt. It needs to be balanced. You can clear using Sage or Palo Santo, and then you need to put at least something that represents each of the five elements to kind of like ground the space and make it yours. Whenever you go through the space to sit down, you want to have a little rit ritual where you maybe light up a candle or a stick of incense and say a prayer and then that then becomes your sacred space and that would be my two little cents of wisdom for today again this is the ask me anything serious so if you have any other questions regarding pretty much anything at all I have been practicing for 20 years I've been teaching for 10 and I am glad to answer anything that might be helpful to you thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day namaste Bye, Becky.